Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving. And no, I don't know why it doesn't go all the way up on its own. It's decided to forget where the top and bottom is, but that's not the point of this video. The point of the video is that Mercedes W123, AKA The Table, which is a car which has been forgotten in both the channel and my driveway for quite some time. Right, so this, the W123, the big Merc, the Merc with no name, oh my gosh, this is what happens when you leave a cup of coffee out here for too long. Oof, oh, I might just burn this cup. This got tucked in here last year because I wanted to space outside for other things, yada, yada, yada. Started doing work on it, it was getting very close to completion. And then everyone's favorite neighborhood Crown Vic decided not to have a floor anymore. And that got parked just here because that's too big for this garage. And it was worked on for ages and this car couldn't move. I thought, great, I can work on the W123 in the garage, but no, because this car is also, like the Crown Vic, absolutely enormous, you can't work on it in the garage unless it comes a little way out of the garage or there's no furniture down the right-hand side. And well, that's not the situation we have at the moment. So on the plus side, it's been out of the weather, but on the downside, nothing's happened to it. And the last time it got featured on the channel was back in December when I fitted a new USA battery to the thing. So this episode, I think as it's been, seven months, nearly eight months, since the last time the car's been part of YouTube. I think we'll do a little introduction, a reintroduction of this car, because I want to get this thing back on the road. Now it's potentially free from its captive slumber, if you will. And also maybe do a side video on reorganizing the garage to make it more usable. What I think I'd like to do is move this car back out to the outside world, underneath the new cover, and the Black Rover back in here because partly it's a running car and it's worth more money and also because it gets really dusty it's got lovely black paint which keeps getting really dirty outside so anyway let us have a little explanation of what this car is where it came from and what the deal is with it now okay so this car is a 1983 mercedes-benz 230e a w123 if you will regarded by many as the best car in the world mercedes spent a literal as in an actual not a figurative billion dollars developing this thing and they went absolutely to town on it making it potentially the best car ever made which is a lovely thing by the time i found it it had been abandoned in a barn for 15 to 20 years no one's quite sure because no one on the farm remembered it being parked there and no one involved with the farm had any knowledge of where it come from and the barn it was in was about to be pulled down and it was actually a free car to me because when i was over there they said well you're interested in it if you'll take it away you're doing us all a favor so Free Mercedes, which has only cost me several thousand pounds since to try and get to this point. Fantastic. Over the next couple of years, I spent a long time out here in the snow, in the heat. First of all, trying to get a set of locks that worked on the thing because there's no keys with it. I got a key number from Mercedes, but it turned out the ignition lock had been changed and the driver's lock was damaged. So I wound up having to buy a complete new set of locks for it. And the Mercedes made it extra fun because just before this car was made in 1983, they went extra secure. So you could only take out the old locks and the old ignition barrel if you were turning the key in the lock at the time. So that was super fun and involved violence. So then I had lockable locks and I had a turnable ignition key. Then I found out the fuel system didn't work, starting with the fuel pump at the back, the fuel lines to the front, and then the Bosch cage electronic uh, fuel injection system, which I spent a couple of months out here in the driveway trying to make work. That was not fun. In the end, it did work and it did fire up. And so we plowed on and then we found the rust in the front. So I did a bit of welding on the front because I love my welding. Also in the bodywork area at the front of the car, we had the little issue that the car had a minor knock. That's possibly why it got parked up in the early noughties because the front bumper is a bit bent. The front valance is a bit whiffy. So I've been the old and slightly rusty front wing. Um, so it needs a new front wing to be bolted back on there. They're quite expensive, but we will get that sorted out. I did find a secondhand good bonnet. So that's currently sat on the roof just there. We can transfer, I say transfer the grill over, but the grill's not that great. So I need to get a new grill. Um, meanwhile, at the back of the car, I then found the rust in the back. <laughs> so we did some welding on the inner arch. I created the inner arch, which I hope will be 
to the precise point where it meets the outer arch because that is now sitting here on the boot. So that was about to be put on the car when we found the rust in the Crown Victoria and then that whole project took over from this project and yeah, you know, life got in the way as they say. Now, the problem we've had over the last few months, as I should have said, is that this car is too big to fit into this garage particularly easily and once it's in here, you can't really do anything else in here because it just takes up all the space. You can, I'm on tippy toes to try and squeeze through. When I parked it in here, I had to climb out the window because I couldn't open the door. So I was really relieved that I hadn't turned the engine off and the electric windows worked. Otherwise I'd have been trapped in there. I'd still be there as a skeleton right now. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff piled up on it. And that's because you can't get past the car to pay, take tools back down to the toolbox. So everything's just piled up on here. So one of my things I want to do in the side channel on, on T-Brake channel is to put some different shelving and things down the side of there so that we can stack up everything, uh, make it more accessible even when the big cars are in here and get past this thing. So I need to have a complete rethink about all of that. The biggest problem is gonna be the jacks because I've got two really nice jacks, one from Machine Mart and one from uh, Draper. Both big low entry, high raise, three ton jacks. So they're big proper things that can lift things like the Crown Vic, no problem. And also get under the sportier stuff like the Rover Coupe. However, they're big and they slide under here nice and easy when the car's not going anywhere. When I want cars that are mobile, that's gonna be an issue. So they're gonna have to live down the side somewhere or something, don't know what. So anyway, our most recent adventure with the W123 was back in December. So it's now August, that's well, six and a bit months ago. Normally it's a Spitfire going over the mid morning. That's some kind of jet and it's very loud. End of last year, back in December, I'd been stealing batteries out of other cars. I didn't have quite enough batteries to go around. And so whatever battery had been in this, which I think was a newish good one, got stolen for something else, I forget what. I think it might be in the 200VI actually. And uh, yeah, this one, I got a new UASA well, 075, I think it probably is, into this. So it cranked like crazy, went like, would have gone like stink, except couldn't hear the fuel pump clicking anymore, which is what we like to call a problem. So. First things first today, having brought you up to date on this thing, I'm gonna try and reach the fuel pump, which is just in board of the back wheel on that side of the car. So I'm gonna do a bit of clearing, and then we'll go and do the old school way of doing this, which means hitting it with a hammer. There's a Spitfire. I can hear it, I can't see it. Two Spitfires, oh my goodness. I thought it sounded a bit weird. I'm not sure if you saw that or not. I hope you did. Now, I'm not saying it's extremely miserable conditions to be working out today, but it's both very hot and very humid. So it feels like I'm swimming between the car and the piles of tools, which also need to all come out of the way. Now the question is, have I now cleared enough stuff? Ugh. Oh, there we go. There is the fuel pump. So what I need to do is find a wooden mallet or a rubber mallet and give that a little kiss. First things first, let's reconnect the battery. Lovely new UASA 075, which has been sat here gathering dust for a number of months now. To make life a little bit easier in between unsuccessful starting attempts, I've just acquired this UASA, what is it? A YCX12 uh, battery charger so that um, smart charger and maintainer, there we go, so that we can uh, keep this thing topped up and well, <laughs> having just de having utterly depleted it when uh, trying to crank the car and start it, we can then recharge it and try again a little while later. I have a feeling how this is gonna go. <laughs> and then we turn the key and I can't hear anything from the back of the car. I should be hearing clicking from under the boot. Now Ron here, don't like clicking. I don't like any kind of poultry. Oh my. Right, let's get under the boot. I've got a choice. I've either got a rubber mallet, or I've got a wooden mallet. Which one shall I hit it with? Bear in mind this is a new fuel pump. But modern fuel is horrible stuff. And even though I've been using V-Power, there is a chance. It's got squiffy in there. Let's try and crank it. Hearing nothing still. Uh. 
Now, do you remember I got sent a power probe? Now, do you remember someone sent me a power probe very kindly in the uh, junk in the trunk? Well, guess what? It's literally an inch too short. Let's try that one more time. Well, there seems to be power getting up there because I'm getting a green light on the power probe. So I'm going to pop these connections off and I've got a spare pump because I had one that came through with broken terminal on it. So I'm going to try and see if the broken terminal one will fire up. But here's a quick off the car test using the um, power probe. I hook this up, negative to the negative, power probe to the positive. I get a click, but no movement. So I just suggest this one's broken already. Earth this to same result, interestingly. So basically what I can conclude from this is that something is broken. I hope you found that helpful. I can't find my actual ordinary test meter to just double check the voltages going through, which is not helpful, but I do need to find that really. Going for an even more basic approach now. I've just got a battery on the floor over there. It's the big one that came in the junk in the trunk the other day. And I've got two wires here. I'll both my hands for this. So let's see what happens if I put this on here. This is the spare pump. No spare pump appears to be dead. Okay, that's not really helpful. Let's do it in reverse. Runs a tiny bit backwards. No, does not want to play. Okay, let's try this on the one in the car. So I hold down there, touch on the positive. I'm getting nothing at all. No result, even a little bit. It doesn't want to know. So we've got a dead pump, totally dead pump. Stunt reverse. This thing isn't earth to the car. It's direct wires, plus and minus. Okay. Let's try hitting it with the hammer, which is currently stopping the camera fall over. I hope this isn't broken. This is like 90 quid from PowerSpark. No, it is having absolutely none of it. Nope, she dead. Minus and plus. Oh, it's starting to come alive. Okay, so maybe if I fit the spare one, that might actually come back to life again. Because this isn't even giving me a spark, which suggests it's stone dead. I think what I've got is one very dead and one slightly dead pump. Not even a whiff of a spark. That is so frustrating. Let's keep hitting it. Yeah. Oh, oh, I've got motion then. Maybe I can free this thing off and get this thing back to life. Up again. Hitting some more. Oh, motion. Oh, that worked a bit then. Yes, it's alive-ish. It was alive-ish. It's not alive-ish anymore. Just thinking about it, let's run it backwards again. Sometimes that frees things off. Well, it runs better backwards than it does forwards. It's coming. It's nearly there. It's welding the wire to itself. Well, the smell of fuel I'm getting down there is pretty stale, so I'm going to try the good old fresh can of V Power trick. And I'll head out, tied up on my tools, put them back in the garage again, put on the fresh can of V Power and let it marinate for a little while and see if that makes the thing come alive. I'm just going to disconnect all these batteries first so I don't blow anything up though. Taking the extreme measure of dumping a gallon of V Power into the tank of this thing and left it to marinate over the weekend. I've also hit it quite a lot with a hammer and I've been sparking it backwards and forwards with just just raw leads of a battery on the floor. And it does click and clunk each time, it doesn't continue to run. However, we do have a big advance now, I can turn the ignition on and here. You hear that little, that little grunt? That is the fuel pump starting to prime, but it's not continuing to click, it's just doing one little grunt. I think it's clogged up. I think, in fact, I am very, very certain 
that what's happened is the fuel that's in there has just gone nasty and it's just clagged it all up and because it's not an openable serviceable item it's dead so well it's a couple of days later and well first of all a big thank you to all my channel members and patrons because without them this video would have stopped right now went online did a quick search for w123 fuel pumps and found this on autodoc for 50 quid obviously plus postage and a several day wait but this is a fuel pump for the w123 so hopefully we can now get the thing started up. I've just realised how long I've spent in the ed edited what I've done so far and realised how long I've spent trying to make this blooming thing work. Um, and it would have been just two minutes just chuck a new pump on it. I can really smell petrol burst because I knocked over a jerry can a second ago, but let's just give this a quick try. You hear the zzz again, but only the quick zzz, so. No, it's... Dead as they come. It is surprisingly hard to get out of that window. Okay, let's disconnect the battery, fit the new pump, and hopefully have a living Mercedes it's the again. Easiest thing to do, and it's lucky I can reach this without the aid of a, a jack to get under the car, because that would not, not really happen at all. Um, but it is a little bit tight for doing anything as exciting as taking stuff off, other than just the little wires on the side. I really am hoping it actually is the fuel pump that's the problem, and not, as it could be, the accumulator which would be expensive and quite annoying to replace. I need all the spanners I haven't got here. So now, here is the new one, and it is fortunately identical, as far as I can tell, to the old one. This is the defective one that's arrived broken. It's got a push-on fitting with like a Jubilee type clip on this end, and we've got a screw-on uni on this end, which is very, very, very tight indeed. I'm gonna find some Bulldog penetrating oil and squirt that on there, because that looks kind of tight. Got a 17 mil spanner to hold this in place on the other, maybe not, against there, 17 mil. Oh, okay, that pushed it up. Oh no, I'm stuck. Well, that's free at least. One good thing, I guess, and I've got a feeling as soon as I pull this off, there's gonna be petrol absolutely everywhere. So me, yeah, there is. Oh man. Oh my god, that's coming out way quicker than I thought. I hope there's only a gallon in here. Oh, I've got a big problem here. And no one smoke right now. Literally no one smoke. Otherwise, we've got huge problems. That is coming out so fast. That's three quarters of the, the can filled. Oh my god, this is going to be too much. Oh, it's everywhere, damn it. Oh crap. I thought this tank was nearly empty. But it's gone everywhere. Literally everywhere. Oh, oh god. Oh, it's everywhere. Ah. Oh. It's in my raccoon wounds! Oh God! It's also really quite yellow, the stuff that's coming out. I might, I might leave it five minutes before I uh, try cranking the car at a moment, once I've got this fitted. That sounds like it's stopping now. That could have gone worse, I suppose. Is this now gonna gush in the other direction as well? Probably. Oh, it's still coming, damn it. I thought you'd finished at that end. Oh, come on, okay. Let's just get this thing off. Oh, come on, you so-and-so, get in there. Let's just hook that back up to that oh, end of my elbow. It's everywhere. Oh my God, this is awful. Can't get on there. On the end, come on, oh, it's running down my arm, it's my armpit. Oh, yuck, okay. It's just literally everywhere. Now sitting in a lake of petrol. Super safe. Right, that is now installed. I do need some better Jubilee clips, but it turns out the ones that were in there weren't actually done up anyway, so not sure how essential they are on the far end that you can't see. 
I had to take this first end that you can actually see back off again because I was missing the crush washer which had stayed on the old pump and in the melee I didn't see it was still there so that came off and on again that is now I think mostly evaporated so let's reconnect the battery and see if we get a buzzing noise from the pump as I say the the vapors have pretty much mostly evaporated now so we can go for the start up oh I can hear it did you did you hear that put the microphone down there for you like a high-pitched wine, rather than a clump, which means we do actually have a functioning fuel pump again. Let's put some petrol back in this yeah. thing. The fuel, even though it's meant to be 50% V-power, didn't smell that nice, so I've only put a dreg back in just to try and get the thing to crank over and see if the car will start. Come on, car! Nearly! Whoops. I can't reach the accelerator. Oops, the wires on the thing. There's a troll. I need some fresh petrol but it is running again. That of course means the car can move backwards and indeed forwards and I can take it in and out of the garage again at last. All it took after being parked for a year or so was a new battery and a new full pump and several hours lying in the dirt underneath the car. I'm hoping that's going to get in better as it goes along. But... I'm thinking the petrol is Not great. I think I've just used all the fuel up. Okay, I need more petrol, but hey, we've got a semi-running car. Fresh petrol and that'll be running absolutely fine. Okay, I was going to, in this video, get the car out and use this big pile oops, of boxes, which is actually complete, oops, not that, not that box box. This pile of boxes, which is a full set of new brakes for the car, discs, calipers, pads, and of course I've got the brake pipe creation stuff as well, so I was going to completely renew the brake system on the car to make it more mobile and then move on to putting that wing on. But this video is now about 20 minutes long and all I've done is basically faff around trying to make the damn thing start. But hey, it does start, which is a massive win, because a couple of days ago it didn't even do that. So, thank goodness something sort of works. Right, I need to go and get a gallon of V-Power because, yeah, I started refilling it. I put the gallon of fuel into the Crown Vic and it actually looked and smelled quite nice. Well, I guess that was actually the V power I just put into this car. Um, the other can, which came out, the, old, the, other ta the other can, I realized looked an awful lot yellower, like a looked really nasty and smelt nasty. So I guess that was all the ethanol which had floated to the top, had come out second, gone into the second can. So that's what's now in this car. So I need to go and get some V power, top it back up again, and then this car is running. Okay, so I've said that three times now. I'm repeating myself, but it is 30 degrees and I'm far too hot to be doing this kind of nonsense. Functioning Mercedes, project back on the track again. Keep watching, we're gonna get some more on this done very soon indeed. I can't wait to be actually driving my W123 after all these years and maybe stopping, starting and stopping. That'll be a major novelty, won't it? Ah, meantime, we're gonna mumble about ethanol, petrol and how rubbish it is. Right, thank you for watching and hopefully you'll enjoy the rest of this project. Something full of it. In the very near future, goodbye. Like, subscribe, head to the merch store, furiousdriving.co.uk. You know the drill.